Here's a better question. Can I make a threat in a game like Paper, Rock, Scissors? Is there a way to threaten the other player without actually threatening to punch them with my rock fist? <laughs> right, it's like, watch out, man. Next turn, I'm throwing rock. You watch out. It's going to be rock. <laughs> Beware. <laughs> so signaling is distinct from making threats. Threats are a very interesting part of games because you cannot make credible threats unless there is one of three conditions present. One, you're playing a game more than once. In Small World, to give you an example from a real game, or Vinci if you played the original, I always threaten anyone who's coming on the board with the new civilization. It's like if you come, when you're coming onto the board this turn, if you come on to my civilization, I will basically lose this game and destroy you and only try to destroy you and not try to win anymore. I might lose the first few games of Small World because I'm doing right. this. But eventually people learn that you actually do this. And then they stop coming in on top of you. And now you win because their choice is to either, if they attack you, they lose too, or don't attack you, letting you win. So in repeat play, you can make credible threats in games. There's a whole mathematical theory around threats. This only works if you play the game more than once. Now You need to establish the precedent. Think about all the ramifications of that. Say we play the Prisoner's Dilemma once. I can't make a threat because whatever. Say I, we play Prisoner's Dilemma ten times. Well... If I threaten, look, if you defect on me, I'll defect the rest of the game. I'll defect forever. So maybe Scott cooperates and I cooperate. All good. So now, by both of us cooperating, we're king-making. We're going to win. Is there any reason for me not to defect on the 10th turn? He can't punish me for it. We so... know it's exactly 10 games. We know the 10th game is the last game. So I should just defect on the 10th turn. Now I get more points. I know he's going to defect on the last turn. Because, because he's just I as know. clever as me. That's right. Nobody's got any smarts more than anyone else does. We're both completely rational. We both know this is the last turn. His threat is completely worthless So now. he defects on the ninth turn. But I know he knows. So I defect on the eighth turn. You see where this goes and everybody loses. It's the scene from the Princess Bride. The second, it is the scene from the Princess Bride. The second way to make a credible threat is psychology. This isn't game theory, but it's psychology. You can wig people out. You can play head games with people, and it totally works in the real world. The third way, and the reason I have a picture of a steering wheel here is an example used from the previous panel. Let's say we're playing the game of chicken. Scott and I are going to be in cars. <laughs> Classic chicken, 1950s rocker chicken. We're going to drive cars at each other. Whoever swerves loses. So if we both swerve, we both lose. If neither one of us swerves, we both die. <laughs> if Scott swerves and I don't, I get the girl. And vice versa. So let's try to make a threat. I'm not going to swerve. I take my steering wheel and throw it out the window. I'm not going to swerve. So what has Scott done? He's changed the nature of the game. He is basically, by taking his steering wheel out, he's removed his own agency. He didn't tell me what he's going to... He did not signal what he's going to do. He already did it. I, can't, I have no choice but to swerve and lose the game or to die along with Scott. So I'm going to swerve. Scott's going to get the girl. 